Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Chris Purdy, who is the CTO of Scenix out of Los Angeles in California. Chris, welcome. Thanks, Martin. NFV, SDN, have come very much to the forefront of what's happening in the global industry, in the new network. Um, and they require, the, these new te technologies require certain attributes, and one of which is service orchestration, which is increasingly important. Why so? Well, I think that there's different parts of service orchestration. There's certainly, and, and I think the NFVO orchestrator sometimes gets confused with the service orchestrator. Our focus is all about the, the service orchestrator. And so what, why that's so important is because for a very long time, services will cross a combination of both the physical network and the virtual network. There's going to be no pure play VNF services that are going to take place. So what has to happen is the operations groups are going to have to be able to orchestrate the full life cycle of those services, both the fulfillment side but also the assurance side of those services across the both combined physical and virtual network. If the operations groups are already struggling to manage services in the existing physical network, when we bring in VNF, it's going to become more complex, not less. And so it's essential that they have that service orchestration layer to try to enable that transition. Okay, that explains that. Now let's talk about your company, Scenix. What is it? What do you do? And what's the vision for the company? So we're a software vendor. Um, we uh, came from roots of a long time ago in the exchange world, but our, we have been become a pure play software vendor because that's been our biggest value proposition. And so what we're really focused on is becoming the, the center of network intelligence, a really focus of big data and telecom. So what we do is we will come in, take a particular network domain, really understand the services associated with that domain and the network underneath, map all these data sources into this centralized information model, and then we'll collect tons of data, the utilization information, fault information, service OAM, test results, et cetera, and run analytics on that in order to really understand what's happening. Where are your hotspots in your network? Where is the network performing well? Where, where are the services to your end customer meeting expectations and where are they not? And what actions should you take in order to improve that service to the end customer and, and make things better, faster, at, at lower cost. Thank you. Now, you have a product, the Cortex Service Orchestrator, which you offer to service providers, I believe, now at this moment, today. So tell us some more about that. What does it offer? Sure, so in our, some of our biggest customers, we're, we're taking, for example, uh, the, let's take a mobile example. We would have an Ethernet backhaul network where we'll have 60,000 cell sites and there'll be on average probably four to five segments associated with uh, getting from the cell site back to the core. And what we're doing actually is first put, putting together the detailed path of the, of the services through the infrastructure, collecting all of this data and running analytics on it in order to solve a lot of operational challenges. So the first one is, and the simplest to understand might be that in the event of a problem today, the complexity of the different systems involved and the complexity of the network mean that it might take an average of about 45 minutes just to find where the problem is, just to isolate the problem. Our, uh, with, with our technology where we're actually able to pull all that together, we can immediately sectionalize the, the, where, where the trouble is. But then we have all this data. And it allows us then to run analytics to form really important conclusions. So when you're using access vendors, are they meeting their SLA or not? Which region is performing better than other regions? Uh, where is the, the, the how, how hot can I run my network without impacting my end user subscribers? So there's tremendous opportunity to really understand how to optimize that network for the services that you're deploying to your customers. And that's true whether that network is, is both the physical network, but also enabling that transition to NFE, which adds more complexity. So you've really got to, to, to do that full analytics. Okay, Chris, that's very clear what goes on. I want to know what happens when you actually turn up at an operator and you actually go into the building and you, you're there for the first time. How does your relationship with the operator, with the carrier, progress from there? So first, we end up typically working on 
a particular network domain. Let's say that it might be for a wireline service, it might be the uh, the, the core MPLS network or or the access network for uh, mobile. It might be the Ethernet backhaul network. Different network domains and different functions. We might be really part of the real-time troubleshooting function, or we, their first priority might be analytics of SLA reporting, et cetera. So whatever the, that first focus is. We then come in and do a deep dive understanding of the service. Ultimately, it's all about services down. So we need to understand that service first, and we go technically how it's implemented in your network, really understand the service. We then have to find the different data sources, that allow us to populate an information model for, the, for the, your particular services, your particular instances. And then we take all the data sources of the real-time tr troubleshooting. Now once we've covered that and we've built that for that domain, usually then there's a tremendous opportunity for, for further build out in that service provider. So that if we're successful at that, and we have been in, in, uh, in our deployments, the operator then says, wait a minute, you've done it for my EBH network. I'd like you to cover my MPLS network. I need you to cover my Internet of Things. I need to cover other network domains. And they may want additional functions. Hey, I really am interested in analytics to, uh, to proactively prevent troubles to take place. I, I'm interested in analytics to help me uh, drive down my cost of third-party software or, or third-party uh, circuits, all kinds of cost reductions. And then finally, that I want you to drive workflow that actually um, allows me to improve my operations on that top function. Thanks, Ed. It's interesting to know how you go about actually doing the work when you arrive at a carrier. It's nice to hear that rather than, you know, yes, we go in and this happens. It's how the thing progresses. Yeah, there's no magic. You know, <laughs> there really is yeah. no magic. You really, uh, one of the most important things about our solution is in no case does anyone em ever manually enter any, any data. It's always about understanding the data sources, populating those data sources, extracting that data, and then using big data technology to allow us to really understand, to give you that, that visualization of the services, to understand those services, and, and really understand how to optimize the, the services for your end customer. Staying on that subject for the moment then, what do you think a service provider is looking for, for today to take their network operations to the next level? Well, I think that uh, service providers have to both, both dramatically change how they understand services and, and the automation level that has to take place. And I think the customer expectations these days have changed dramatically from the past where it was okay to take 60, 90 days to turn up a service, where it was okay that the, that uh, it took a long time to repair. Uh, I think what's happening is the over-the-top players have come in with a level of automation, real-time troubleshooting, self-serve uh, portals that mean an operator has to dramatically change how they're how they're running their business. And and I think NFE is a is a component that's going to help make that happen, but it's completely insufficient because one of the biggest challenges is the operations processes, organization, and and systems that require a really significant change in order to differentiate uh, the services and dramatically reduce the cost of delivering and, and understanding and managing those services. Okay, Chris Purdy, thank you very much indeed. Yep, thank you very much.